better met up with traditional home magazine and antiques roadshow experts Leslie and Lee Kino at the New York City Frame Gallery Gill and Logaditch. Owners Tracy Gill and Simeon Logaditch told the brothers about their favorite frames and gave them a tour of the gallery. So Simeon, we're here with all these frames from all different periods, what, from the 17th century all the way through the uh, modern period, right? Sure. Up till today. Postmodern even. Okay, now what do you think frames do to a picture, to, or to a painting, an oil painting, watercolor? How does it affect uh, the piece aesthetically? and also value-wise. Well, framing is, framing is one issue, and then period, period framing is a couple of issues because you're dealing with the history, uh, mm -hmm. the, tr the tradition of framing, and how that relates to the paintings, and also how the, the frame itself will make a painting look better. And it has to do with the color and the weight, the style, and many, many, many different things, textures, colors of, of gilding, okay. with the carving or a composition. Tracy and Simeon search for antique frames to sell and also restore and replicate frames on site. This is an example of a frame that we copied, and um, it's, uh, we no longer have the original here, so I can't compare it, but uh, trust me. Look at that this, patina you've got on there. It's very, it's very beautiful. Yeah, it's, a very, it's very distressed, and this is the way it was made originally, right. with, with this sort of dark pigment. Well, that's a great frame. What would that, uh, something like this cost, may I, may I ask, if, so, to be well, made today? Well, you know, a replica, uh, our replicas will, will be uh, usually about, I would say, well, it's, I would say about 25% of the value of a period frame. And in a, in a frame so, like this, the replica was maybe $2,000. I mean, we try to sell period frames always, but sometimes there'll be a certain style, there'll be, you know, oftentimes it has to do with size. If we're doing a very large piece, there, you can't find a period frame that, that large. And that's why we'd make a replica. So Simeon, what's your favorite frame in this whole shop? Hundreds of frames here. Do you have a favorite? I have several, um, but I, I think a better way of putting it is I have a favorite frame maker. Okay. And, and that would be, that would be um, Charles Prendergast, who worked uh, sometimes with his brother Maurice Prendergast, the famous painter. Yeah. And they really innovated, and they sort of began the, the movement in America of artist-made frames. And this is a wonderful example of an artist-made frame, made for one of their own uh, paintings. Tracy, what do we have here? What's uh, the, these thin frames stacked well, what up? What we were trying to pull out here was frames that you could find at flea markets mm -hmm. or uh, antique shows fairly affordably. You found all these there at flea markets? Yeah, these aren't the kind of frames that a picker or someone who would be selling us great frames would come around with. Right. They might every once in a while because they know I personally love them. Right. But and I actually collect these for my family photos <laughs> and my daughter's idea. drawings oh, and my own artwork. The Kino brothers say it is possible to get a bargain on an antique frame. The great thing about flea markets and treasure hunting is that frames do turn up and you can find nice, inexpensive, uh, aesthetic period, 18 70s, 80s, 90s frames, up to 1900, 1910 even, uh, frames that were composite or composition, and they are inexpensive. I mean, you could find them for $50 for a very simple one to $300, and you might find one for $10 if it's a real sleeper. Because most, uh, most owners think, you know, when they have a tag sale, oh, the painting's gone, this is just the frame, couldn't be worth much, you know, <laughs> and uh, little do they know that it's can be worth thousands of dollars. Frames turn up anywhere, and that's the fun part of, 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 of uh, looking for frames or looking at frames is that they turn up at flea markets, they turn up at country auctions, um, they turn up on eBay. I've, I've bought some very good frames even on eBay. And, and also, um, they will turn up mostly uh, on other paintings. Yes. And so what happens in the frame world is people separate frames and paintings. It's, it's sad when you you know, you hear that, but yeah. that's just the that's just the nature of, of, of frame dealing. So where do you start when you're picking a frame for your masterpiece? I think it's really important to pick the right frame for the right painting. Because sometimes just the width alone can affect how the painting looks, how much you focus on it. Some frames are too thin and some are too thick. But it makes us focus on what's inside. And so, also some some pictures were never meant to have bright gilt fancy frames, of course. They were meant to, uh, for, for instance, as Tracy and Simeon well know and explain very, very, uh, very uh, adamantly, you know, some George Bellows paintings were very masculine and macho and, you know, the boxer scenes, you, you don't want to have a gilt frame, uh, the, uh, fancy gilt frame on those. Those are meant to have macho frames. Picking a frame from the correct period can also make a big difference. Uh, museums are great, great places to go to find out what period frames should look like. I mean, there are copies, bad copies, and bad frames in museums as well. But if you look, you can sometimes tell if the, you can tell sort of by the wear and tear on the frame whether it could be original to the painting. Okay. And then you, that, that'll become your model for something to look for. 
and then you can go out into the world and look for a period frame that will, will work with your painting. The Kino brothers also say some of their favorites are early 19th century gilded frames. Some of these frames have reflective, shiny gilding. Then they also have matte gilding right next to it. And then there's maybe sand that's been poured and that's gilded. So you have all these different surfaces and reflective surf surfaces. And water and oil gilt. Water right. and oil gilt, exactly. Tracy showed Lee a frame with the different styles of gilt. I have to ask this, is this kind of, the contrast between the, the shiny and the dull, is, okay. if that was intentional, is that water gilt versus yeah, oil this, gilt? This little edge here, right here? is burnished yeah. water gilding. Right. Um, they actually use burnishers to compress the clay over the gold okay. and it makes it shine. Now and here you can see it's wearing off, so you can see this one has gray clay underneath, yeah. which American frames typically do. 19th okay. century American frames always have gray clay. So gray what's the other, what's the flat gilding? Well, this one may, sometimes you'll have a beautiful burnished cove here as well. This is matte gilding. It's still water gilded, okay. but it hasn't been burnished. Okay. Typically. So See ah. here, the stem of this acanthus yeah. is burnished. It's burnished. Typically, and this the things that are hard in nature, like mm -hmm. stems, right. are burnished. And Could the petals be. and leaves are left soft. Nice. And the contrast makes it more three-dimensional, maybe? Exactly. Okay. So like the way a leaf moves in the wind or something. Okay. And then these corner bands are also burnished. Now let's see how this frame works on, look at, right there. Look at that. that. That's classic. a classic. That's a picture, I'll tell you. <laughs>